But let's let's segue into this next this next story from Newsweek. Fact check. Did Missouri shop say no guns and ammo for Biden supporters? <laughs> Guess what? Fact check. True. Yes. It, it, it actually happened. They say President Joe Biden preached that the country requires unity to overcome its challenges in, the, in his inaugural address last week as it remains divided with the Capitol riots earlier this month. Blah, blah, blah. In Missouri, depending on the presidential candidate you one voted for, some local residents might not be able to obtain guns or ammunition at one store. Austin Peterson tweeted, my local gun shop announced last night they do not have any guns or ammunition available for Biden supporters. The comment section of howling leftists is delicious, like hot apple pie with ice cream. Let's keep it going. I love him. They see the claim. The tweet from him is the claim. A user from the social media forum Gab posted a screenshot of an article from the Gateway Pundit an online political news blog that says we report the truth and leave the Russia collusion fairy tale to the conspiracy media with the headline Missouri gun shop announces they don't have guns or ammo for Biden supporters. They have the actual post from Facebook here. It's true. Trigger Firearms and Reloading LLC based in Jefferson City, Missouri, recently posted to its Facebook business page. We don't have guns or ammo for Biden supporters. Sorry for the inconvenience. The company that lists itself as a gun store on the platform has received more than 3000 interactions and more than 1,000 shares on the post with mixed reactions from users in the comment thread. Reached by phone, Trigger Firearms and Reloading LLC hung up on Newsweek's request for comment about the Facebook post, declining to respond. Gee, you think? Facebook user Terry Plotner wrote, private company so they can do what they want. <laughs> but don't In a comment responding to the gun shop's post and apparent support. The ruling true. They did say this. They will not sell guns or ammo. So what does that mean? Like you walk in and they're like, who'd you vote for? And I you're like, like that. I voted for Joe Biden. Get out. Yeah. Who's I mean, going to admit that? The gun shop. I don't think they're going to admit it. I don't think they're going to be asking, but this is great PR to bring attention to their gun store. I know a gun store in New Hampshire that literally had Joe Biden as the salesman of the month uh, <laughs> a few weeks ago. And that brought in a whole bunch of attention and a lot of people angry and a lot of people pissed off. And he's like, I love it. Give me all the attention. Uh, the guy was also a fan of We Are Changed, which is awkward walking in there. And it's like, oh, of course. Yeah, that's me. Where, where, where's, where, where are the people going to banks asking for a multimillion dollar investment to start primer companies or powder companies because of the shortage of all this ammo? Yeah. Like now's the opportunity to get on the ground yeah. floor. In fact, can you 3D? print ammo oh we're getting there so we've got a couple of people working on it um developments are coming we've got we've got projectiles we've got casings uh we're working on we've got half the chemistry we're working 3D on 3d printed more. projectile Whoa. not no so we're 3d printing molds that will let you cast projectiles oh, in any oh, yeah. caliber and diameter you want oh, wow. because in many places in the world you can't buy the molds like well so but, here in the but it's incredible no. let me let, let me wow. ask you would you provide all of your schematics to Biden's voters? Sure. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I want, yeah. I, I'm, they're, they're going on the internet for free. Yeah. Anyone can download them. Yep. Go it, nuts. Everyone will have them if they want them. I guess that's the point, you know, if it's, it's freedom. Yeah. It's you as an individual have the ability of the technology, you can do it. You know, I, I was thinking about what, like, you know, why these liberals, like these Biden supporters are so concerned and will, well, first of all, let me say they're willing to support it. They're willing to support a man who says he's going to outright ban all gun sales and accessory sales online. Did he, did he want to ban ammo too? Online sales of ammo? Yeah, I do recall. Yeah, he wrote a lot of vague, generalized language about not allowing people to buy a firearm uh, within a certain amount of period, close to another purchase of a firearm. He talked about banning online sales of anything how, how gun-related. Could, how anything. could you vote for him and yeah. then actually go and expect to buy a gun? Yeah. I, and that's a weird question outright. Like... Is, how many people are actually going to this gun shop and saying they're Biden supporters who want to buy guns? I guess they exist, but it's like, all right, I'll tell you what, you give me, no, you have to give it to me. Like you, it's being confiscated. You don't, yeah. you don't, you and, don't and it's it. interesting that this is, <laughs> oh, you got a stink bug in there. Yep. Yeah. It, it's interesting that this is happening in, in Missouri because in Missouri, this is also where the McClowski case happened. I'm yeah. still trying to look up the latest information about what's happening with them, but they're the couple that walked out with firearms with very poor trigger discipline yeah. and very point, very poor uh, aim discipline uh, when a BLM, uh, you know, pretty much protest broke down the fence of their door and, uh, you know, they say threatened them. So I'm still trying to find out exactly what's going what on. What should they have right done? Like had their guns pointed down at the ground? Well, it, when you see, uh, I think it was Patricia McClowski. Yeah. She literally she had her, her finger on the trigger. Wow. and she was moving the gun around in a place where it was rightly behind her husband's head. <laughs> like, you're yeah. not supposed to do that. That's not smart. <laughs> That's not smart. 
I feel like everything else was appropriate given yeah. the information that I have. Like it was, it was a violent crowd, and yeah. you're you're they're they're confronting you on your property. So I feel like that's okay to point a gun at them with your finger on the trigger and be like, I'm actually going to shoot you if you keep coming at. They were on his property in a castle doctrine state, right? So, so it's like in, in in some states you can shoot someone before before they even get on your property. If, if in order to prevent someone entering your property, some states allow wow, you to shoot somebody. That's hardcore. Yeah, yeah and so and so there's like uh, I don't know the full details, but some states like New Jersey, I think New Jersey has duty to retreat, meaning you're in your home in the middle of the night, and you're allowed to own a gun, and then someone breaks in. If you can flee your home, you must. But the, it's it's really funny because I was talking to even a cop about this, and he laughed and he was like, "Where are you gonna go? <laughs> it's your house. <laughs> Where do you go? It's, it makes no sense." And I was like, "Yeah." And then in other states, they have castle doctrine with no duty, no duty to retreat, but a duty to enter your home. So like, let's say you live in you know, Maryland and you're on your front lawn or something and you see someone coming towards you, you have to go into your house first. Then if they try breaking in, you can defend your home. In places I think like West Virginia, I'm pretty sure West Virginia is like you see them on your property, you can shoot them. Yeah. In That's New York City, like, you defend yourself, you, you hurt the perp, you go to jail for the crime of hurting the perp. So yeah, I know yeah. many instances and cases where people had violence brought upon them, they defended themselves, and because they left a mark on the, the attacker, the aggressor, they went to jail. Really? Yeah. What You're supposed to do yeah. no harm? There's even individuals, there's even stories in the United States where people were violently attacked, fought back. And, uh, you know, with with extreme cases of even, you know, people trying to kill another person, that person defended themselves and they went to jail. So there, there's a number of cases that all depends on the jurisdictions and it all depends on who the attorney general is. And this is why we've seen individuals like George Soros literally bankroll attorney, attorney generals all throughout the country that, of course, will play favorable into the agenda, into the narratives that they want to push. The moral of the story is simple. Don't live in blue states or blue cities. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, you have to... Go somewhere where you're allowed to be reasonable. Defend and yourself. When you do go, leave all of those policies there. Yes, that's amazing. You see, you see the story earlier about a guy from Cal he, from California moved to Texas and oh, then yeah, was yeah. like really upset and angry. Like he called it, a, it. It was not a conservative utopia, and it was like monoculture. Just didn't like it, so he leaves. And it's like, you know what, man? That's a good story. You know why? He left. Yeah, he didn't like it. He left. It's, it's remarkable because, you know, we have so many people now fleeing these big cities and going to these, these red areas where I, I can understand why this store is basically saying no Biden supporters can buy guns because you've got Democrats from big cities moving to red areas, bringing those policies with them, and then they want to buy guns and then get them banned later. What's the point? Like create, create grandfathered in guns that only you can sell like, like full auto, you know, what, what do they cost? Like 20 grand for, for a, 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 like a belt fed full auto machine gun? Yeah. Uh, yeah, belt fed. You're gonna get way up in there, but because it's grandfathered in, the only way right. to own it is if it's an existing. Right. There, there's a finite number. A lot of people want them. Yes. Uh, so maybe that's the plan. Maybe it's a bunch of rich people being like, if we get guns banned, then only we have the guns, and they'll be worth a million bucks. Huh. There you go. It's a racket. Yeah. The the guy who moved uh, to Texas and then back. I mean, one of the top reasons he left is because the the weather was oppressive. That, uh, that there was no public land, that there was no snowy mountains, that that the people in Austin were rude. But, uh, you know, well, you, you know, went to Austin. Austin's. Yeah. The liberal, liberal. Yeah, yeah. 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 They have a liberal mayor there who goes to uh, vacation in the Caribbean islands while telling everyone to stay home and not travel because of covid. Uh, just like most Democratic politicians who don't follow the law. But I mean, this guy sparked an interesting discussion. But I do believe media organizations like the Daily Mail went too far. They kind of doxed him. They released public information about his house, where he lived, his family photos. And I'm like, this is too far. This is. I mean, people are enjoying calling him the new Karen and dunking on him. But but for me, but it was his old house. Yeah, he didn't live there anymore. Well, I, I don't know. It looks they're showing how his house in, in Los Angeles. Uh, sorry, San Diego and his house in uh, Texas that he had. Yeah, he doesn't live at either. It's those. still a lot of personal information yeah. that's not yeah. really needed there. And a lot and, of people, and, and a lot of people yeah. ragging on the guy. And I'm like, but he did the right thing. Yeah. He moved there, yeah. hated it and left. Exactly. There you go. If you don't like it and you, you move that, that's fine. And we shouldn't be criticizing him. He does smart spark an interesting conversation which i think we all should have and uh that should be it you know you yeah. know what i think ultimately the biggest problem is it's that conservatives who live in conservative areas understand what city life is like to a certain degree and don't care for what people do in cities but people who live in cities have no idea what rural life is like and want everyone to live under the rules of a city like so so i talked about it before if you live in manhattan 
Uh, even even I think Luke accidentally uh, came out in support of regula- gun regulation when uh-huh. I said, what happens if you live in New York City and you got a, you got a five five six and someone breaks into your cubicle apartment well, and you said maybe reg- maybe don't allow certain calibers? I was well, like, well, ah, well ah, maybe ah. some individuals. We had this argument. I'm like, hey, Tim, you should get a shotgun. I don't know. My my walls in my RV are kind of thin there. Yeah. <laughs> well, so so the point is, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you, Alex. Uh, in New York, for instance, I understand the right to bear arms, especially to defend yourself. If you live in one of these cubicle loft apartments where you got 30 people surrounding your, your, you know, 10 by 10 cube. It smells like sour milk. And someone breaks into your apartment, a certain, a, you know, a certain bullet's going to go through walls and potentially hit other people. And that could create a huge risk. Yeah. So all bullets are going to go through walls. Like there is no bullet small enough that it's going to stop in drywall. Even like a, what, what a hollow point 22. Yeah. It would go, it would, it would go through, but I yeah. mean like, but just, just assume that it's going to, because this is, this is sort of the danger you get into with gun ownership of, you're responsible for wherever that bullet goes, period. So if it goes through who you shot into the 12 year old in two apartments down, well, that you know, you may have shot the guy, yes, but the consequence of that, you know, was y- you've, you've created an unacceptable consequence of that. You killed a 12 year old, you shot a 12 year old. So, I mean, this is something that a gun owner needs to be conscious of. This yeah. is something that you get through exposure to firearms in general, is you develop this knowledge over time. Man, so. could you imagine living in New York City and there being a gun shop in Ti- Times Square where they're selling like a 308 and you can <laughs> well, just buy it? Well, it's like, to also right. clarify, you know, I'm not for the regulations, but, <laughs> but, but there is a, there is a particular gun culture that, that needs to be talked about because when we went out to the range, we met a lot of random individuals in the middle of the woods, away from all the roads, and they were all courteous. They all looked you in your eye. They all talked yep. to you. They all treated you with respect. There was no attitude. There was no, you know, crap thrown your way. There is a particular gun culture that is that takes safety very seriously, that makes sure that you don't point, point your muzzle at people, regardless of whether the gun is loaded or not yeah, loaded. Yes, but, but Luke, it's not about gun culture. It's about regular people. Yes. Like, think but, about how, remember you made that video about being on the subway with all those people everywhere? Yes. So Luke made this video a long time ago about being on the subway with millions of people. Just keep going. You got nothing else to lose. And they That's never the talk to each other. But how, how often, like we, we see videos of attacks. They happen. But how often does the average person walk through New York, walking past all these people, and no one just randomly starts beating you or stabbing you? Same way you? with driving. You never really veer the car over and ram into someone. I know. You know, you know when, I, when I was 16, and I, my, well, actually, I got my license when I was 18. But when I was like first starting to learn how to drive, I was shocked when I, when I realized the cars don't frequently bump into each other. I was like, how is that possible? You got to park. Cars got to bump into each other. And it's like, well, sometimes when you're parallel parking, you might bump somebody. But for the most part, millions upon millions of cars every day drive within inches of each other and never touch. Amazing. And I was like, wow. Especially taxi drivers. They, they, they drive like crazy. F- yeah. Freaking. I don't even now, want to now, say it. Think about that. And then when, I, when we went to the range and there were some other dudes there setting up targets and they had a bunch of guns too. I have no no fear or no concern about them shooting me or anybody else because I don't regularly get attacked by random people, mm-hmm. especially yeah. when you're at a range when people are going there for a purpose. Well, pe- yeah. people who live in cities are paranoid and terrified that someone's gonna. You know what? You know what it is? Maybe maybe because there's too many nasty people who work in these offices or who are on Twitter, and they know that they're they're bad people and they're just worried about someone coming to their office and you know going postal. Yeah, or something. Uh, desperation can breed violence, obviously, and in cities sometimes you have poverty and and hunger, but trust is like such an integral part of being human you know we got to where we are as the socially constructed species by trusting each other thanks for checking out this clip from the timcast irl podcast we do the show live monday through friday at 8 p.m so come back to check us out when we go live don't forget to subscribe hit the like button hit the notification bell and we are also available on all podcast platforms for free if you want to listen to us there thanks for hanging out and we will see you all next time